Salute to all the movie and TV cinema supporters. Welcome back to Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Show, where you get the latest in Power Universe and Cinema Breakdown. Now, let's revisit OG Power. We all know that Kanan's real name is Kanan Elijah Starks, but when he finally meets Tyreek, he introduces himself as who? Slim. Another thing. We also saw an episode where Ghost seemingly overpowered Kanan and he killed him and he burnt the building down that he was in. But guess what? Kanan slipped out of there. With that being said, is it a real possibility that Unique is Breeze? Now, we saw the episode that was leaked where basically Unique was laid on the floor and his face was all beaten and battered and the picture was kind of distorted. But... We know in real life that a person can be beaten and battered. They can be beat to an inch of their life. Um, we've seen people, when they get pumpkin heads, their head is swole, their eyes are closed, they unrecognizable. They go into a coma for a minute, they receive medical attention, and they're able to come back, and they come back better than ever, right? So when we look at Unique, um, Unique is a man. Unique used buck 20 to sell for him at one point. Why can't Unique get better and use Kanan to sell for him? When we look at Kanan, Kanan's reputation is coming up through the streets. Everybody knew him. So let's just say if Unique um, was beat to an inch of his life, went and got himself together, and came back as Breeze but used Kanan as the front man. And that's the reason why I think many people don't know how Breeze looked because Kanan was the front man for Breeze. Another thing y'all probably don't remember, but some of y'all will. Before Raising Canaan Season 1 came out, Power posted to their Instagram, who is Breeze, and they posted a picture of Unique. Now, I know a lot of y'all saying, yo, Unique live in the house right now. Breeze was killed in the apartment. Well, guess what? Unique baby mama is fed up. She found out about Rock. We got a, a preview trailer where someone went to Rock house and put a gun in her face. I'm willing to believe that that's uh, Unique's baby mama who did that. She found his gun, found out about him and Rock. She went there with the gun, and Rock probably gave her a warning. Listen, girl, I'm not the one to play with. If you got problems with your guy, you deal with that with him. And if you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen. And she ends up taking Unique's son and leave him. And that's why Unique downsized, because he don't need all that space no more, and he gets an apartment. I do think at some point Rock will take care of Ronnie because Ronnie is just moving too wild out the streets and that will leave that um power vacuum for Rock to come back in the game. But remember this, Rock cannot deal with Kanan. Kanan don't like Rock, but guess who Kanan will like? Kanan will like Unique. If y'all remember when Kanan first met Unique, he was like, astonished by him man he saw that he had all the jewelry he saw he had the money the cars the girls and Kanan wanted to be like that if you really remember Kanan really wanted to start hustling after he seen how unique was moving and how unique looked another clue unique uh like to do crossword puzzles right and him liking to do crossword puzzles would mean nothing except for they said that Breeze liked to watch Jeopardy, and Jeopardy is a word game. So when you think about it, back in the day, I don't know what year came, um, Jeopardy came out, but if Jeopardy wasn't out in the uh, timeline of when Unique was back in the 80s and 90s, he would have did crossword puzzles. Well, guess what? If he liked word games, by the time Jeopardy comes out and people not using crossword puzzles anymore, it's an easy transition for him to start watching Jeopardy because he already liked words. He already liked knowledge. Now, I know this is something that some of y'all are probably thinking about. A lot of people, um, they say, uh, they said that uh, Breeze wasn't smart and he was a brute. Um, he moved with uh, power. And a lot of people saying, oh, that sounds like Ronnie. Nope, it's not Ronnie. The reason why I know it's not Ronnie is because Ronnie has showed us he's calculated. Um, Ronnie looked at Unique when he first saw him and saw blood on his hand and asked him what happened with that. Um, Ronnie was calculated enough to go try to see Dean. Ronnie was calculated enough to set up a, a meeting with Snaps and Pop to get money before he started to go look for some work. Somebody who not calculated would have just went to the person 
who got work and would have asked to get fronted without any money to move towards it. And then once Ronnie found out that Dean wasn't going to be a help to him and Dean was going to be spreading his business around town, he got him out the way so he can continue to move. And think about it. This is my last point, but probably my best point. Ronnie's name to this point is good on the streets. He don't have to reinvent himself. And everybody who's gotten in his way who can possibly tarnish his name, he's either further damaged their name. Like, don't get me wrong. Ronnie is so calculated that he he saw that Unique didn't have a good name in the streets. So he started going around to damage Unique name. Now, y'all remember also Unique said that his name wasn't good in the streets anymore. And he was telling Lou at one point and Lou was telling him, man, maybe you need to just go out of town or something. Go somewhere else. I can't remember the full conversation, but um, Unique, he said he's not going anywhere. He said Queen is his streets. It's his city. That's where he love to be. So when you look at the situation, um, he has the right to be breezed and um, just come back and reinvent himself. And also, this is another theory. He could be Breeze when he with Rock. Like, Rock can tell Kanan, yo, I'm dealing with a new man. His name is Breeze. But since Kanan already respect Unique, Unique can approach Kanan as his self Unique, but he start telling everybody else around the city he Breeze. Or he could tell Kane he, Kane he Breeze. I mean, Kanan he Breeze. Um, I see this going a lot of different ways, but... Um, I do think that Unique is Breeze, man. It's just all coming to me like a whisper last evening. He said, I see, I said, jealousy, I said, got the whole power universe mad at Unique, I said. Shout out Jay-Z, man. That was a rendition of some Jay-Z lines. I know my New York people going to appreciate that. My hip hop lovers going to appreciate that. But anyway, man, this is my breakdown of why I think Unique is Breeze, man. Um, I can't see it being anyone else. And like I told y'all, I definitely think that Rock is going to get rid of Ronnie. And I think that they was probably trying to plot a plan. But after what he did to Unique, I think they definitely got to get rid of him. And I'm just telling y'all this, right? Howard has done this a bunch of times. Well, we've seen somebody who we thought was dead. We saw him die in a flat fire. We saw them get shot at. We even saw Tommy Kai get blew up. We saw Tommy run into the thing. His car got blew up. Everybody thought he was dead. But then guess what Tommy did? Tommy went over to Chicago. And let me tell y'all something. Power book force that I do not like. These police in Chicago know that Tommy Egan is faking his death and he from New York and they don't think the team up with the people in New York. That's so crazy to me. That's, that's kind of a fake storyline, but I know that they trying to make it show that the lead detective is so thirsty to make a name for herself that she'll do anything, including not include the people who need to know or who can actually um, really come in and help them and identify who Tommy is for real and put an end to it. Ghost thought he killed Kanan in the fire, but he actually didn't. Somehow Kanan escaped the fire, and when he escaped the fire, he went to D.C. with his cousin Jukebox to recuperate, and then when he came back around, he gave himself a new name, Slim, and he prayed on Tyreek St. Patrick's, but ultimately he ended up having... Tyreek St. Patrick do his dirty work. And even though he was dead and didn't get to see it, um, he was able to kill ghosts. That's one time when someone faked their death in power. Tommy, things was getting very hot for him in New York. They were trying to take him down for a bunch of things. So what he ended up doing was making a masterful plan. He crashed his car. His car blew up in the flames. And when they went to the scene, they said, hey, he must be dead. And Tommy actually ended up leaving town. That's the second time someone faked a death in power. Effie tried to kill Lauren. She knocked her out, took her in the car, put the car in there, drove it, tried to help her drown. Somebody actually seen the car from a distance, called the paramedics. They were able to save Lauren life. And then the feds put her in hiding because they wanted her to turn on Tyreek St. Patrick's. But she didn't know much about Ty Tyreek St. Patrick's other life. So it was nothing for her to really tell. 
That's the third time they faked the death in power. If Unique was talking to Ronnie with a Lil Wayne lyric, he would have told him, I got it all, but I beat you like you stole something. He put the beats on him like Karen Sylvia, right? And so what ended up happening from there, he was walking away. Ronnie came behind him with a pipe, boop, 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 boop. And then he picked him up one last time and punched him. Now, Unique definitely looks dead, but Unique could not be dead. He could be in a coma. Now, Ronnie put him in the trunk. Ronnie put him on the ground. Ronnie uh, kicked him down a hill. And when you look at that situation, we would 1,000% believe he's dead. But um, we haven't confirmed he's dead. Yeah, we did see Detective Howard say he's dead. But the possibility could be that Detective Howard is saying he's dead is because um, unique girlfriend, Pernisa, put a APB out, a missing persons report, on unique after he didn't show up to the house for a couple of days um and she and probably wasn't returning none of her pages or whatever so she put that out it could be a possibility that somebody found unique laying down in that ditch said hey let me get him to a hospital and he's gonna reinvent himself and he'll come back around but he could come back around as breeze now um, I know this is far-fetched, but I want to keep hope just like y'all want to keep hope that Ghost isn't dead because we didn't see a funeral. That's James St. Patrick. How don't James St. Patrick get a funeral, right? But since James St. Patrick didn't get a funeral, we're going to have to see do Unique get a funeral because if Unique don't get a funeral, Unique is Breeze. And we see that Unique do not make sound decisions. You don't put your hands on a man like Ronnie. And Ronnie honestly was just trying to show Unique how to man up. Um, but I can talk about that in another video. But this would be the fourth time that somebody would fake their death in the power universe and they would come back as Breeze. It is confirmed that Unique is back on Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. This will be the biggest surprise of the season. Now, I did a video about three weeks ago on this channel called Unique is Breeze. Did Ronnie really kill Unique? You can watch that in the end screen. And I said that it's a strong possibility that Unique could fake his death and come back. Um, That first hit to the head could have knocked him unconscious. Ronnie could have beat on him, but he possibly couldn't have beat him enough to kill him and then remember unique gave us that gem at the beginning of uh raising canaan when it first started he said until that body pop up that man ain't dead now because i've been giving y'all some great content in return y'all been giving me great theories and content and i also been posting some of y'all theories and i was dm'd on tiktok and i was given a screen and it was showed it showed Unique coming out of Kanan's apartment as Crystal was going in. Now, this could be photoshopped. Of course it could be. But when you look at the stills of the situation, you see the camera around it. You see Unique coming out. You see Crystal going in. You see Crystal standing there. You see the people standing around with the boom mic. So this leads me to believe um, that Unique is still alive. Now, when we look at the next episode, the next episode is called um coming home to roost now what could come home to roost ronnie could actually think that he got rid of unique and everything is okay and guess what he didn't get rid of unique and everything is not okay and what comes home to roost is the fact that unique unique is back and he's back for a vengeance now like i said unique also told us all season that his name was burnt up in the streets um, with his name being burnt up and also with him knowing what Ronnie did to him and everybody thinking he did, that gives him um, that gives him a up, upper hand on everything, right? So if everybody thinks he's dead, like I told y'all in that other video, all he got to do is come back and start telling people he can work with Kanan. Kanan can be the face of his business and he can just tell Kanan his, fa his name is Breeze. Now, this kind of also makes sense as well why Breeze would be in the house every night at 7 p.m. watching Jeopardy because Unique, probably because he's telling everyone that he's dead or he let everyone believe that he's dead, he only come out the house at a certain time. When he come out the house, he only going to certain places. He not moving around the street. And Breeze, wind, the way the wind moved through the street. So he breezing in and out of traffic. He breezing in and out the house. Um, He may come in. He 
got his hood on, he leave. Um, I've always believed that Unique was still alive. And I think that this leak that came out when they said that Curtis Cook Jr. is going to be playing Breeze. I believe that whoever worked for Power knew that somebody was going to leak that Unique was back on the show. It could be a possibility that they have a hacker, somebody who was trying to extort them for money. So what they ended up doing was they tried to get in front of it and put out that information. They probably even ran a campaign to get that information out. But now, um, I'm not going to lie. I 100% believe that Unique is Breeze. If Unique is not Breeze, um, I'd be very, 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 very 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 surprised man now if i got this right i'm gonna be 100 percent happy now when y'all look at some of these other things i know y'all gonna jump down in the comments and say no but you said breezes ronnie and you said breezes curtis well guess what i gotta do those theories because y'all like those theories this is a power book universe cinema show and I got to give y'all all the theories. I got to give y'all all the pre predictions. I got to give y'all all the news. And I got to give y'all my thoughts. And I'm one of them people who I don't mind if I'm wrong. Um, coming back and correcting that I'm wrong. And just saying that I'm wrong. So um, if I'm wrong on this. Which I 100% 99.9% believe that I'm not wrong. And Unique is back. And Unique could be Breeze. And um, Unique could be working behind the scene to get, um, what do you call him, Ronnie out the way. But I do still think that Stefano is going to kill Ronnie for Rock. And we've also seen way too much of Pranissa for Unique to be dead. You have to think about it. Pranissa, um, she wasn't in the streets. So her storyline only existed because of Unique. So when we look at this situation, why is she still around? Yeah, Rock went back to her last week, but what Rock went to her back about, Rock could have got that information from anywhere. She could have snooped around the streets and got that information. So that 100% makes me believe that um, Unique is back. Now, I'm going to need y'all to click that like button, that subscribe button. Jump below in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Um, this is a spoiler alert. Too bad for y'all. We about Dean, man. Dean got to do with your broke business. You're always focused on the wrong thing, Nick. You all right losing everything I left you. Long as you think you looking pretty doing it. Unique is Breeze. And this is another breakdown for that. Now, when you see this picture, Unique is coming out the building. Um, a lot of people saying it's not him. But if you look at the facial structure, if you look at the cheekbones, if you look at his chin, if you look at the way his um facial hair is shaped up, it's definitely him. Now, what is different now? Y'all saw the clip where Ronnie basically told Unique, you don't care about being broke as long as you look good while you are doing it. When we look at the Ronnie character, um, they write a lot of his lines to give us hints of what the, what's to come. Like when he confronted Dean, but before that he was drinking a sliced pop and then he ended up stabbing and killing Dean. When Jukebox asks Ronnie, what's going on with your brother? Why you here at a party and he missing? Ronnie said Unique is only gone for a little while, but he'll be back. Now, obviously, we know that that was Ronnie trying to throw Jukebox off and basically saying he alive because he know Jukebox going to spread the word around. But it was also the writers letting us know Unique will be back. And I've given y'all these examples again. Kanan. We thought Kanan died in the fire. There's no way Kanan made it out of that building in OG Power. Guess what? He came back with burn marks. Scrap. He got taken by the other side. We just knew he was dead, but guess what? They just scarred up his face and ripped his eye out. Lauren. We thought Lauren was dead. Effie took her away. We just knew Effie killed her. The actor Paige even went to Instagram to give a farewell to her Lauren character. And guess what? We saw Lauren pop back up. Unique showed a lot of love to a lot of people in the streets. And he only committed violence when he absolutely felt like he had to. But now when we see him, we going to see him move with a ruthlessness. Now, why did I say he low key in the thumbnail? Because remember, everything he was wearing, MCM, fur coats, big chains, bulletproof BMWs. Now when he come back around, it's going to be hoodies. It's going to be regular jeans. It's going to be no chains. It's going to be black. 
like he really going to start to blend in with his environment. Think about it. Unique is a person that you would know from a mile away. You could be standing on one corner. He on the other corner, half a block, a whole block away. And you like, man, I know that MCM outfit. Man, I know that white MCM outfit. Oh, man, I know that unique haircut. Like his style is just very unique where it stands out. So it makes sense that now when he's back, he's coming out of Canaan building and he has on all black. He got his hood pulled up. He got his head down. And also, if I got hit in the head with a pipe, I might have a dent in my head and I might also still have a scar. So what I would want to do is I would want to cover that up so nobody could see it. I don't want nothing to give me noticeable features while I'm trying to move under the radar. Another thing I want y'all to pay attention to is that uh, OG Kanan said that Breeze wasn't very smart. When you look at Unique, man, he's made a lot of bad business decisions. If we being honest, Ronnie was the brains of the operation. Ronnie was the face of the operation. Unique was his little foot soldier that he was teaching to come up in the game. And then Ronnie went to jail and since um all of his other people was gone dead and in jail with him he he had no choice but to leave the business to unique but you see ever since ronnie been out he been telling unique basically how he a mess up and in business what leads to messing up not being smart not making smart decisions not having common sense not having intuition not having discipline now Obviously, when we look at Unique, he's charismatic, but also remember, Unique always messing up big words. If you look back, every time he try to say a philosophical thing, he mess it up. The only thing he got right was bull in a china shop. But if you go back through the episodes, Unique was constantly mispronouncing words, and I don't think that was on purpose. Also, after being smashed in the head, he might get even stupider. When 50 Cent got shot, he got shot nine times. If you listen to his little homie, Bangham Smurf, he'll tell you a lot of people thought 50 Cent was dead. When he was in the hospital, he wasn't letting nobody come in and see him or none of that. A lot of niggas didn't know what was going on in the hospital. His closest homies did. And once he got out the hospital, he went to the Poconos in order to recover. He talked all the time about giving people different names in the streets. Bangham Smurf also talked about how 50 Cent ran around with his guys from Brooklyn. Now, some of the guys from Brooklyn might have called him Boo Boo. Some of them might have called him 50. He got a song on the Massacre album called Ski Mask Way. Bad News VA now, that sound great. I see niggas with their ice on, rim shined up. This town's one big waiting to be... I holler at AI people to get gats. They charge me 500 a piece for two max. Then I'm back doing me. I'm back out on the spree. Catch me a nigga slipping out pumping that D. Catch me a little crew I have them pumping for me. The more product it take, the more paper you see. Change my name and then why they don't know where I be. Yeah, a nigga doing good, but a nigga low key. As you heard in that line change my name and NY. it's not far-fetched so for those of you who watching power and never been in the streets never been around nobody in the streets i can understand how y'all can't fathom that unique would come back as breeze and people already know him as unique but trust me it happens all the time in the hood just think about it um even if you from chicago if you from philly if you from anywhere right somebody you might know him by john you might know him by Lil John. You might know him by Lil J. You might know him by JD. Now, guess what? Let's just say this guy get in some trouble or somebody else get in some trouble and he was with him and they trying to get him to testify against him or he in danger of going to jail himself. Well, guess what? He's still going to be moving around the hood. He might leave from that neighborhood and go to the west side or go to the north side. And guess what he's going to start doing when he get there? He's going to start telling people his name is something different so the dots can't be connected. It's a hood classic called Paid in Full about Alpo and Rich Porter. When Nori character rolled up on Ace outside the club, he told him, I ain't seen you and you ain't seen me, right? And that's how it goes sometime in the hood. When you trying to lay low, 
you might get some work from somebody and they don't want the other person to know that they got the work. So they be like, man, just tell them you got it from your homie from out of town. If they ask you my name, just tell them my name, Breeze. Unique is back. And a lot of people keep saying, well, how is he back if he got bust over the head? He got put in the trunk. He got threw down a dirt hill and he was left there for dead. I keep telling y'all, Unique said, until you see a body, that man ain't dead. Now, the guy that y'all looking at on this screen, he was sitting at a bus stop one day, just waiting on the bus, minding his business, and someone came up and shot him in the face with a shotgun. Blew half of his face off, blew some of his brains out, but guess what? He survived, he's alive today. So I'm not saying that it's not the possibility that Unique died from being bashed in the head with the uh, pole. I'm letting y'all know that it is possible to survive this. I know somebody who was shot 47 times and all they had to get was like a plastic stomach. It's like a little plastic thing that they wrap around their back and they go over their stomach and cover it up so their intestines don't come out. Um, it's a lot of different um, ways people have been mutilated, but they have still survived and they still living to this day. A lot of y'all, if y'all younger, I would say 20 and under, y'all wouldn't know about um, Rotten.com. I was watching this video one day when I was younger. A guy jumped off a platform and was trying to hit the pool, but he slipped as he pushed off the building, hit his face up against the concrete, and it split his face right down the middle. His brain was exposed through his skull, and you could see his tongue wagging back and forth. And he, even though his split face was split wide open, his teeth was split wide open. He had some teeth on both sides of his mouth. Obviously, some of his teeth was missing and he survived. They was able to stitch his face back together and through a lot of reconstructive surgery, he was able to get a resemblance of a face back. It took him a long time to recover. So when y'all saying how this could happen, bro, it's possible. Now, I'm not 100 percent saying that he is back. I'm saying that Unique is back, and I'm not 100% saying that he's Breeze. I'm saying Unique is Breeze. Now, take that how y'all may. It doesn't bother me. And for those of y'all who's saying, hey, this guy's a spoiler. Listen, bro, I don't care if you come on here and tell me, uh, show me the video of how Ronnie gets killed. I'm still going to watch the episode because it doesn't take anything away from the episode for me. What I like about Power is that it's based out of Queens. Um, it has some of the old Queen influences in it because they have a lot of getting money guys from the 90s and a lot of catching body guys from the 90s. And I like the um, psychology of trying to figure out why they doing what they doing. I like the thoughts of trying to figure out, man, who was, who was this? I heard this story before. Ooh, he remind me of this character and that character. So y'all got to relax, man. Y'all got to take it for what it's worth. Y'all got to take it as entertainment. And you got to remember, we have season three and season four, five, six, and three more seasons. We might not even have any more Raising Canaan. May, hopefully, we can get to seven or eight seasons. But the reality of it is we might only get to like six seasons. And what are we going to do then? We're going to move on to the next hot show that's out. Also, be on the lookout. I'm going to do a breakdown of that new BMF trailer. And like, I know this is a power multiverse and cinema channel. Click the subscribe button. And the reason why I call it a cinema channel, because I'm not only going to do power, but power was the first way I started it. So I got to pay homage to that. If you need come back, how do he convince Kanan to be on his side? Well, I was proposed this question. And the exact question is, how does Unique sell this persona to Kanan? So what I think could happen is Unique roll up on Kanan. He talking to him. He take his hood off. He show him the uh, bruises on his face. He maybe even show him uh, his head caved in a little bit on the side or the back. And he tell him, look, man, Ronnie dangerous. He hate rock. And if he'll do this to his brother, he'll definitely do this to you. You going to have to decide. I can't decide for you. I'm just letting you know I'm back around. I'm about to get busy and you need to take care of Ronnie before Ronnie take care of you and Rock. All Ronnie want is power. All Ronnie want is money. All Ronnie want is to be in control. 
and he'll do anything to anybody to get it. And I think that's when Kanan comes to a crossroad, right? And with Kanan dealing with Snap and Pops and also dealing with Ronnie, it's going to start running through his head. Oh, they said F-Rock. Then we got a scene where we see Snap and Pop pulling guns on somebody. Now, it could be the Colombians they pulling guns on, but I think it might possibly be Rock they pulling guns on. And Rock might actually be at there with Kanan and Marvin at that time. And also, another theory I want to jump out to y'all is Lou running around here drunk, confessing to people, yelling out in the streets that Rock made him kill people. Who does she want him to kill now? And I think that they can possibly send Lou out to Virginia with Aunt Deb to get himself together. He got to go out there and get himself together, hide out, lay low, then come back a better person if he come back at all. Now, I know I did a theory video where I said that Marvin could be Uncle Gabe, but also at the same time, we just got to be honest. Uncle Lou could be Uncle Gabe. Now, I know a lot of y'all going to say, nah, well, Uncle Gabe is dark skin. You got to remember, they recast people all the time. And then you got to understand the difference between uh, this is that OG Power was done first, so they backcast him. So they could add that to the storyline, not even really caring about the fact that he dark skinned then. If y'all ever watch Fresh Prince, y'all saw it go from the dark skin mama to the light skin mama. And there's a lot of other series and episodes and shows and movies and sequels and prequels and all of that that have casted different people. Um, a movie called Major League, one of my favorite baseball movies of all time. They had Wesley Snipes in it for the first one. He wanted too much money, I think, the second time around it was. So then they ended up putting Omar Epps in there, who is Detective Howard. So listen, man. Um, Y'all got to understand, man, this is movie magic, and a lot of things can happen. And I did a video where I showed y'all something like this happened in real life, where, you know, a guy got his shot fa face shot off with a shotgun sitting on a bus stop, and he still survived. Now, Curtis Cook Jr. is not going to be Breeze. And my main reason, I don't need no other reason besides this, is that he was in Jukebox Crew on OG Power, James St. Patrick, right? He was committing a robbery. He was being nervous. He was saying too much. And Jukebox was like, listen, I can't have him blow my spot up. And boom, she got him up out of there. Now, obviously, if he was already in the Power Universe, especially in the future, they not going to bring him back to the past. It just would be too weird. Now, with Ronnie, Ronnie is about to be a star of another show he's the lead actor now the new role he about to be in if it's a white show it's gonna translate if it's a black show it's gonna be done by like two years because i mean by two seasons because everybody is going to see him as ronnie and it's gonna be hard to get into his other character um and the only person i can say it is is down to two people I believe is Unique. That leak that I showed y'all about, I believe that Unique is coming back. I believe that he gonna end up telling Kanan everything that happened between him and Ronnie. And Kanan gonna be like, man, damn, I'm so happy that I killed Ronnie. And the next person up in line for that situation is D-Wiz, brother. We heard mention of D-Wiz, brother, one time. Never saw him again. But also, um, that's a setup for something when they mention a character like that. But that character don't come around and we don't see him, especially since they brother died. Um, D. Wiz can also come back around a little later and be trying to move in on Kanan business. Like once Kanan become Kanan and he start moving and shaking in the street, D. Wiz brother can come back like, oh, I've been hearing your name ring. Yeah, you was my uh, brother friend. And D. Wiz, I mean, Kanan may show D. Wiz brother love based off the fact of what happened in life and what his mom did to his brother and he may try to end up taking advantage of that situation but um long story less long uh curtis cook jr is not breeze i still believe unique is breeze and y'all can feel how y'all want about that let me know who y'all think it is in the comment d wiz brother or unique because i believe ronnie definitely did episode 10. let's talk about unique death now Unique death had to come 
in order for him to reinvent himself. Unique is flashy, man. You see him with all the MCM on. In season two, I believe he was wearing a lot of Gucci. You saw the bulletproof Beamer. You saw all the gold chains. And that's not a person who can teach Kanan how to be grimy. Unique only knew how to be flashy. He only knew how to get the money, but he only knew how to get the money long as it was already structured for him. We saw once Unique had to restructure things from himself, he didn't know how to do it. And the reason he stayed in the streets, because that's all he ever knew, that's all he ever did. But Unique wasn't the best at thinking for himself, and he was very emotional. We saw that all through um, the Power series with him on Raising Canaan. Um, he would go off of bad information. Um, he would get rid of guys who was in his crew who he really needed. And all of that led to at the very end, he was isolated with nobody to come to his rescue. Nobody to be his extra eyes and ears. And when he was dealing with Ronnie, he didn't even have the sense to see where Ronnie was going with everything. And how Ronnie was acting and how Ronnie was behaving could only end in a bad way. Now, when Ronnie ran down on Unique from behind with the pole and he bashed him upside the head, a lot of people was thinking Unique Def is here. A lot of people was thinking that, you know, Raising Canaan has got rid of Unique, but I don't believe they have, man. And um, we saw the leak with Unique coming out of the place. I definitely believe that Unique will be back. Um, I believe that Unique is Breeze. I know a lot of people don't believe that. But in my vision of everything, I see Unique uh, coming back. Maybe possibly having some brain damage. Maybe even having some memory loss. Or maybe taking a time to recover. Maybe he come back in season four. Um, he's been gone away. Somebody found him down there. Because it was some garbage bags down there. It was some leaves or something down there. So somebody was doing some type of work over there and the type of work they were doing with those garbage bags would require them to come back. Now, could they have came back for those in the morning and Unique was just unconscious, heavy breathing and they were able to see him? And let's be honest, man, I did see the fact that Unique had a lot of blood rushing out of his head. Um, I did see the puddle behind his head. I did a video on that. If y'all want to check it out, it's in the playlist. But we got to give Unique the benefit of the doubt. We have to listen to the things that Unique have said all through the season. And what they like to do is they like to write these characters so they can foreshadow themselves. Um, I'm going to always give y'all this. When Rock said to snap and pop, it's about who's through the door last and who cut the lights out. What did she do after she killed Juliana? She cut the lights out. When Ronnie was sitting there at the table drinking a sliced pop, what did he end up doing? He ended up stabbing Dean to death. So it's a lot more than that, but I think those are the three that will resonate with y'all. Those are the three that happened most recently, and those are the three biggest deaths that y'all will probably be able to look at and be like, oh yeah, he making a good point. So when I look at this unique situation, man, Honestly, even when I'm saying that, his name is unique. I mean, unique means what? A special situation. So in most cases, people would die from something like that. But guess what? Unique can be a special situation. This that's happening with unique could be something that he can overcome. And I don't want to necessarily say he can overcome it easily, but it's probably something that he will overcome um, in no time. Now, let's talk Ronnie. We know that Ronnie going to die, or at least I believe that Ronnie going to die this next episode because there's no way that Ronnie and Raquel is in the same room and they both walk out alive. And we know Kanan not going to die because we saw Kanan in OG Power. Um, Kanan did give a hint that he went to see his mom. Now, he could have went to see his mom in a cemetery and the writers could possibly go back and say, hey, Ronnie is such a fan favorite. Let's keep him on. But when you look at this Ronnie situation, right? And this is just my opinion. Um, Ronnie has served his purpose. He doesn't have any more purpose to serve. Like he's brought the killers in from out of town. He's threatened famous. 
He's gotten rid of Dean, which was a thorn in his side, unique side, rock side. Dean wasn't giving anybody no work on the south side, so he really had no more purpose of being inside of this episode. Now, for the next move, if we could just get unique at the end of season four, that I mean, at the end of season three, that'd be perfect. But they may drag it on. Now, that picture did get released with what he had on, so maybe what they'll do at the end of season three is they'll show unique walking into the building with that stuff on but they'll save that um surprise for season four episode one we'll actually see him walking back out the building now it's definitely a chance that breeze has been around already it's definitely a chance that breeze was in that picture uh, that Kanan took in that club that night when Jukebox was telling him to leave. It's definitely a chance that D Wiz brother could be a uh, breeze. It's also a chance that Scrap could have some ugly other family members who was in jail at the time or who coming from out of town that could be some family members. So when I look at Unique Death, it was probably one of the most important things and the most interesting things that has happened in raising Kanan this season. I think when he died, even though, and, and, and the most important thing about it, I think, is that even though it leaked that he got hit across the head and that he was dead and he was laying on the ground, when it actually happened in the episode, it still trended. And most times when, like, even when we saw that um, Tyreek killed Ghost and we saw that leak, when that happened, everybody was kind of just like, okay, that leak happened. Um, they wasn't even really surprised when Ghost got killed. They didn't, it didn't trend. But when Unique died, man, it still went everywhere. So that lets you know how important his um, role is. So the first thing I told y'all is Unique got uh, threw down there by some garbage bags. Somebody could possibly find Unique the next morning. Um, I told you that Unique basically means a special situation um he was in a situation where you thought or think he should die but if he lived that would be a special situation and then the other thing is that we saw that picture leak of unique walking out that building now a lot of people saying that's not unique but actually if you look close in the picture and when you blow it up it don't get uh super clear or whatever you want to say it but you can see that it's a knot on the left side of his head and if you actually look at the picture where he's laying down on the ground, you can see that it's a knot on his head as well. So I don't think Ronnie hit him in the head seven or eight times. I think Ronnie hit him in the head once. He hit him in the head maybe twice on the front. And I think the rest of those hits that Ronnie gave to him, um, I think those were to the body. And definitely when you look at Unique uh, Head on the left-hand side, he definitely have a a um a dent right there, which would probably still be there when we see him come out as Breeze. Ain't your brother missing us some we throw in the damn park? You need to take your time off. He'll be back. Ronnie told us Unique would be back and he was taking time off. And in real life, what did Unique tell us? He was taking time off. Now, he didn't tell us he would be back, but... We know Ronnie is one of them people that use the foreshadow a lot. So I don't think it's by coincidence that Ronnie said he'll be back. I don't think it's a coincidence that Unique told Marvin until that body pop up, that man ain't dead. Now, a lot of y'all basically coming around, especially since that leaked picture came out. And y'all admitting like, yeah, Unique will be back, but y'all still being delusional. Y'all still not admitting that Unique is Breeze. Now, somebody made a great observation to me and they said it's only three people who could be breeze unless it's one of these people who got out of jail but um now dang that just okay let me stick to the initial point they said it could be d wiz or symphony symphony now symphony haven't been in the street at all and symphony he's not he's smart so I don't think he could be Breeze because he's just too smart. He got too much common sense. Now, from a street aspect of things, he could not be smart. And I just highly doubt it would be him. Now, D-Wiz brother, maybe it could be D-Wiz brother. D-Wiz brother stay in and out of jail. But D-Wiz said his mama happy when he in jail. And he stay in jail a lot. So I don't think D-Wiz brother would stay out of jail enough to be Breeze. 
So that only give us unique unless Kanan met somebody inside the party that night that we just didn't get a chance to see or didn't pay attention to or somebody who got released from jail when Ronnie got released from jail that we haven't seen before. But in my opinion, everything points to unique coming back as Breeze. And my personal opinion is no reason to bring unique back if he's not going to be a breeze. He, he serves no purpose or no point to the storyline. They, they've told everything that they can tell about him. So why would they bring him back? It would make no sense if he not breeze to bring him back unless he coming back as the person who going to introduce Kanan to breeze. Unique is coming back and here's more proof. When Butter was performing at their showcase, they had a banner behind them and that banner had a woman on it. And who was that woman on that banner? None other than Joey Badass, real life girlfriend. Now, if you see at the top up there, it says Shanice. She was the headliner of the mall showcase. And why would they have her headlining the mall showcase? Um, it was to drop another clue that Joey Badass will be back. Now, when you look at the situation, I keep telling y'all, a lot of people saying, he stepped away to go on tour. Well, when they shoot for these things, they already make sure that there's no conflict of schedule once they offer them the job, right? So Unique wouldn't, I mean, Unique, Joey Badass wouldn't have got this job and then right in the middle of it been like, oh, I got a scheduled tour coming up. No, once he locks in and he agrees to the terms of the contract and he agrees to how much money he gonna get paid, he doesn't put anything else on his schedule. So. Once he's off the schedule for a little while, if you look now, all he's doing is posting pictures of him and his girlfriend on vacation, running around and et cetera, et cetera, right? That's just to throw everybody else off. But um, she had a cameo in there and that cameo was just a nod to Unique, AKA Joey Badass. They was letting us know that he will be back. Why would he be back? Because his real life girlfriend is on there. So um, I think that was just a little Easter egg that a lot of y'all probably missed. And honestly, I would have missed it too if it wasn't for the great community we have on the Power Book Multiverse and Cinema channel. Salute to all of y'all, man. We gonna keep building, we gonna keep growing. Um, if y'all like this Easter egg that I brought to y'all, click the like button comment what y'all think about this to me this only can mean one thing and that that means that unique is not dead to me that also means that unique will be back as breeze um plenty of people have faked their death before and i think he haven't faked his death in the um typical fashion it's not like he act like he got himself killed or he lied or he ran off and or he did what tommy did but a lot of people in this power universe have faked their death before and i think the only thing that makes his him faking his death different is that he actually got into a situation where it can look like he did um if ronnie was gonna just dump the body why not just leave it at the tailor shop if ronnie was gonna dump it somewhere where it could never be found um that makes no sense to me it makes no sense why he wouldn't just leave it in the tailor shop. I, I don't understand it. Now, if y'all got any comments or thoughts of why he didn't leave it in the tailor shop, y'all should definitely let me know that. Why do Unique watch Jeopardy as Breeze? Now, a lot of people have been posing that question, and I have the answer for you. Shout out to the Power Book Multiverse and Cinema community, right? The reason why Unique is watching Jeopardy now is to regain some more knowledge right so when unique get to the situation he got hit in the head he got head trauma he done lost some of the things he already knows so he starts watching jeopardy to regain some of that knowledge that he lost and to get more knowledge um i think when unique come back he'll come back and he won't be quite himself personality wise he won't be quite himself but also intellects he won't be quite himself now we got to remember, Unique wasn't the smartest to begin with when he first left um, Power. When he first came around the scene and he was talking to Rock, he was trying to use big words. He wasn't saying them right. He was trying to use uh, slogans and sayings. He wasn't saying them right. So when you look at Unique, I keep trying to tell y'all Unique is not the brightest light bulb in the house. And... 
that's no knock against him. I mean, he's in the streets. And Ronnie went away before he could fully learn the street game. So it was a learning curve for him. He was literally learning. It was like on-the-job training for Unique. Now, once he gets back, I think that by him turning himself in a breeze, he won't be out as much. He'll only be out when he need to be out. I believe he'll be a person who only go out after dark, like to handle business. He may be out early, but like I say, it's going to be he breezing in, breezing out. Just like um, James St. Patrick has the name of Ghost. He got the name of Ghost because you never see him coming and you never see him going. I do believe that most of the hits that Ronnie gave to Unique was to the body, but the first one was definitely to the back of the head. The second one was definitely to the left side of the head. And then remember, Ronnie picked him up and punched him after he had beat his body. Now, one thing I pointed out to y'all is that Unique face never got blue. His face never got purple. Um, when Ronnie rolled him down the hill, it was a bunch of bags down there. Now, those bags could have been somebody who was working for a community center. Um, it could have been a community project. But those bags didn't just get there by themselves. Somebody was probably cleaning up that area. And maybe Ronnie put him in that area because he knew somebody would find him. Um, I don't 100% believe that Ronnie understood or knew that Unique was dead. I think that Ronnie probably just looked at him and was like, with the condition he in, I'm going to put him in a trunk. He passed out. If I roll him down this hill, he's probably going to die. Maybe some animals going to come and eat him, as crazy as that may sound. But I don't 100% think that Ronnie thinks that Unique was dead when he dropped him off there. Now, also, when you look at this situation, I don't think Ronnie beat Unique to try to kill him. I think he beat Unique to try to show him, don't play with me. Like, you put your hands on me. We got into this fight. And I think what happened was once he said, I'm the big dog now, I think Ronnie lost all his cool and was like, oh, okay, I'm going to show you what a big dog do. And that monologue that 50 Cent gave was amazing. Um, you don't put your hands on somebody. The only thing you're trying to worry about you don't even know what y'all fighting about no more. It's only about who's going to walk away and who's left standing. Jeopardy is a great trivia show. Um, it has some of the smartest minds on there. And it also asks some of the greatest, most brilliant questions. So if I come back from brain trauma and I feel like I done lost a bunch of knowledge or I feel like I got to relearn a lot of words again, because that's something that could happen too. He can also have to learn, relearn words again. And the fastest way to learn those words is to hear them when somebody else speak them. So maybe he could be doing Jeopardy as a form of rehab for himself. But it's going to be something about that, man. And then I told y'all once before, him being out at 7 p.m., it makes sense that he would be in the house every day at 7 p.m. to catch Jeopardy because um, he probably first will start off with it just as a way to relearn some words, relearn some phrases, get more knowledge. And then he like it and he starts seeing it work and he like, you know what? I'm going to keep watching this every day. I think when Unique come back, the biggest thing we're going to see about him is that he's going to be more ruthless. He's not going to play no games with nobody because after your brother do something like that to you, there's no way that you go back to trusting people and you won't think it's like after something like that happened to you you'll start thinking anything is possible somebody can do something to me i don't trust anybody so he also gonna take this opportunity to improve on his intelligence um i think breeze is gonna be smart he's gonna be more of a representation of james st patrick um when we see him um he gonna be charismatic He's going to have knowledge. They said he wasn't smart. And I don't think he wasn't smart from the standpoint of he didn't know anything. I think he's not going to be smart because he's going to start having that same routine. And something that just, just, just came to my mind right now. A lot of times when you look at people with uh, dementia or people who have memory loss, um, they tend to do the same routine because that's all they can really remember. Now, I'm not saying that's 100% the case, but I'm just giving y'all that theory just came to my mind. So 
if y'all think that unique is breeze i would like for y'all to let me know i also did a video about unique aka joey badass girlfriend being in episode nine uh home to roost when jukebox then was performing on the stage the hit r b group butter um they had a headliner banner on the back and the banner was for a woman named Shanice. Now, if y'all know anything about Joey Badass, his new girlfriend, um, that's her on that poster, that flyer that's hanging up over Butterhead. And to me, I think that was just a nod to let us know that Unique is still in the power universe. What other reason would they have to have his girlfriend in that episode? Why is she up on that flyer? Out of all the women they could have used in New York, out of all the people, any AI-generated um, image they could have used to put up there, they end up using Joey Badass, real-life girlfriend. So, I mean, it's a lot for us to think about when we look at this situation and we look at this episode. But for me, um, I think it's a dead giveaway. And I think a lot of people now are understanding that Unique is still alive and it's not far-fetched for him to be alive, especially with all these Easter eggs that they have given us and all these different hints about what's going on in this situation between Unique being here. Is he here? Is he not? Is he breathes? Is he not? Um, we gonna see soon enough though. Episode 10 is next week. If you like this video, I need you to click the like button. I need you to subscribe to the channel. I need you to share this on your Facebook. I need you to share this on your Twitter. I need you to share this anywhere you can. Let's get the word out about Power Book Multiverse and Cinema um, YouTube channel. Is Unique coming back as the Breeze character or will Clarence be the Breeze character? Now, I've given y'all a lot of breakdowns as to why I think um, Unique is Breeze. And then today, I gave y'all a breakdown as to why I think Clarence could possibly be Breeze. Now, I want to give a breakdown of what I think about Unique. And I'm going to give a breakdown of what I think about Breeze. And what I want y'all to do is jump in the comments and let me know exactly what y'all think. Um, I know a lot of y'all don't like the Clarence being Breeze thing. And the thing about Clarence is the only reason we know Clarence name is because Power released it with his press release. But his name has never been mentioned on the actual show. So he could still be holding on to a nickname that he never told us. As far as Unique, we know Unique will be back on the show. We just don't know in what capacity. We saw the leaked photo with him coming out and he was by Crystal. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. But I need y'all to click that like button, comment below, subscribe while I give y'all um, what I think on this situation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my theory where I tell y'all what it would look like if Unique was Breeze, but also where I tell y'all what it would look like if Clarence was Breeze. Let's talk about Unique Death. Now, Unique Death had to come in order for him to reinvent himself. Unique is flashy, man. You see him with all the MCM on. In season two, I believe he was wearing a lot of Gucci. You saw the bulletproof Beamer. You saw all the gold chains and that's not a person who can teach Kanan how to be grimy. Unique only knew how to be flashy. He only knew how to get the money, but he only knew how to get the money long as it was already structured for him. We saw once Unique had to restructure things from himself, he didn't know how to do it. And the reason he stayed in the streets, because that's all he ever knew, that's all he ever did. But Unique wasn't the best at thinking for himself and he was very emotional. We saw that all through um, the Power series with him on Raising Canaan. Um, he would go off of bad information. Um, he would get rid of guys who was in his crew who he really needed. And all of that led to at the very end, he was isolated with nobody to come to his rescue, nobody to be his extra eyes and ears. And when he was dealing with Ronnie, he didn't even have the sense to see where Ronnie was going with everything and how Ronnie was acting and how Ronnie was behaving could only end in a bad way. Now, when Ronnie ran down on Unique from behind with the pole and he bashed him upside the head, a lot of people was thinking Unique Death is here. A lot of people was thinking that, you know, Raising Canaan has got rid of Unique, but 
I don't believe they have, man. And um, we saw the leak with Unique coming out of the place. I definitely believe that Unique will be back. Um, I believe that Unique is Breeze. I know a lot of people don't believe that. But in my vision of everything, I see Unique uh, coming back. Maybe possibly having some brain damage. Maybe even having some memory loss. Or maybe taking a time to recover. Maybe he come back in season four. Um, he's been gone away. Somebody found him down there. Because it was some garbage bags down there. It was some leaves or something down there. So somebody was doing some type of work over there and the type of work they were doing with those garbage bags would require them to come back. Now, could they have came back for those in the morning and Unique was just unconscious, heavy breathing, and they were able to see him? And let's be honest, man, I did see the fact that Unique had a lot of blood rushing out of his head. Um, I did see the puddle behind his head. I did a video on that. If y'all want to check it out, it's in the playlist. But we got to give Unique the benefit of the doubt. We have to listen to the things that Unique have said all through the season. And what they like to do is they like to write these characters so they can foreshadow themselves. Um, I'm going to always give y'all this. When Rock said to snap and pop, it's about who's through the door last and who cut the lights out. What did she do after she killed Juliana? She cut the lights out. When Ronnie was sitting there at the table drinking a slice pop, what did he end up doing? He ended up stabbing Dean to death. So it's a lot more than that, but I think those are the three that would resonate with y'all. Those are the three that happened most recently, and those are the three biggest deaths that y'all will probably be able to look at and be like, oh yeah, he making a good point. So when I look at this unique situation, man, Honestly, even when I'm saying that, his name is unique. I mean, unique means what? A special situation. So in most cases, people would die from something like that. But guess what? Unique can be a special situation. This that's happening with unique could be something that he can overcome. And I don't want to necessarily say he can overcome it easily, but it's probably something that he will overcome um, in no time. Now, let's talk Ronnie. We know that Ronnie going to die, or at least I believe that Ronnie going to die this next episode because there's no way that Ronnie and Raquel is in the same room and they both walk out alive. And we know Kanan not going to die because we saw Kanan and OG Power. Um, Kanan did give a hint that he went to see his mom. Now, he could have went to see his mom in a cemetery and the writers could possibly go back and say hey ronnie is such a fan favorite let's keep him on but when you look at this ronnie situation right and this is just my opinion um ronnie has served his purpose he doesn't have any more purpose to serve like he's brought the killers in from out of town he's threatened famous He's gotten rid of Dean, which was a thorn in his side, unique side, rock side. Dean wasn't giving anybody no work on the south side, so he really had no more purpose of being inside of this episode. Now, for the next move, if we could just get unique at the end of season four, that I mean at the end of season three, that'd be perfect. But they may drag it on. Now, that picture did get released with what he had on, so... Maybe what they'll do at the end of season three is they'll show Unique walking into the building with that stuff on, but they'll save that um, surprise for season four, episode one. We'll actually see him walking back out the building. Now, it's definitely a chance that Breeze has been around already. It's definitely a chance that Breeze was in that picture uh, that Kanan took in that club that night when Jukebox was telling him to leave. It's definitely a chance that D Wiz brother could be a uh, breeze. It's also a chance that Scrap could have some ugly other family members who was in jail at the time or who coming from out of town that could be some family members. So when I look at Unique Death, it was probably one of the most important things and the most interesting things that has happened in raising Kanan this season. I think when he died, even though, and, and, and the most important thing about it, I think, is that even though it leaked that he got hit across the head and that he was dead and he was laying on the ground, 
when it actually happened in the episode, it's still trended. And most times when, like, even when we saw that um, Tyreek killed Ghost and we saw that leak, when that happened, everybody was kind of just like, okay, that leak happened. Um, they wasn't even really surprised when Ghost got killed. They didn't, it didn't trend. But when Unique died, man, it still went everywhere. So that lets you know how important his um, role is. So the first thing I told y'all is Unique got uh, threw down there by some garbage bags. Somebody could possibly find Unique the next morning. Um, I told you that Unique basically means a special situation. Um, he was in a situation where you thought or think he should die, but if he lived, that would be a special situation. And then the other thing is that we saw that picture leak of Unique walking out that building. Now, a lot of people saying that's not Unique, but actually, if you look close in the picture and when you blow it up, it don't get uh, super clear or whatever you want to say it, but you can see that it's a knot on the left side of his head. And if you actually look at the picture where he's laying down on the ground, you can see that it's a knot on his head as well. So I don't think Ronnie hit him in the head seven or eight times. I think Ronnie hit him in the head once. He hit him in the head maybe twice on the front. And I think the rest of those hits that Ronnie gave to him, um, I think those were to the body. And definitely when you look at Unique uh, head on the left-hand side, he definitely have a, a, um, a dent right there, which would probably still be there when we see him come out as Breeze. Juliana people never late. Let's go. It's only been like two minutes. Bravo? Nah. Yo, we blazing these motherfuckers. What? Because you know I'm ready, nigga. No. Let's explore the possibility of Clarence being Breeze. In the comments, y'all said, hey, Clarence could possibly be Breeze. Have you thought about that? And so me being smart like Ronnie and Ghost and Rock, I took the time to explore could he possibly be Breeze and what that would look like. And you know what? I'm going to tell y'all. Y'all smart just like Ronnie, Ghost, and Breeze too. I'm not saying 100% that this is true, but let's focus on two things. Let's focus on the fact that they told us Breeze was all muscle and no smarts. Breeze was his business partner. James and Tasha got rid of him and sent me to jail. And although I've done a bunch of theories about Unique being Breeze, I've also did some about Ronnie being Breeze, which I no longer believe Ronnie is Breeze. But when we look at Ty Dolla Sign character Clarence, Juliana people never late. Let's go. It's only been like two minutes. Ronnie tells Clarence, yo, Juliana people never late. And Clarence say it's only been like two minutes. He want to wait. Ronnie's smart enough to know something ain't right. Let's get up out of here. Now, that's sign one that let me know that Clarence not as smart as the average rock that's laying on the ground. Um, when you're dealing in the drug trade, when you're dealing in something as high risk as that, people like that don't come late. They own time. People like that don't want you to come late because if you come late, they think you might be setting them up. If you come with too many people without telling them, they think you might be setting them up. So in my personal opinion of this situation, it's three things that I think was about to happen. I think that Ronnie was setting up to meet with Juliana, but I think Ronnie was also going to rob the people once they got there. Now, that's not going to matter since Juliana is dead now, but that's sign number one that the Clarence character is all muscle and no brains. Now, the first thing Clarence do as he see the cars squeal up he cocks his gun. Um, he didn't assess the situation. He didn't want to see what it may be. And obviously they pulled up abruptly and they screeching up and they moving up fast. So you know it's not nothing good, but Clarence is moving off instinct. He muscled. That's all he know to be is muscle. He didn't assess the situation and try to see if it was a way he can get out of there without a shootout. He instantly cocked his gun. Which will bring me to my next point. Bravo? Nah. 
Clarence saw a bunch of foreigners hopping out the car and he thought they were 5-0. Now, maybe from a distance at first glance, you could think, all right, these guys are white, they are cops, but they got very distinctive features and they in New York. Um, it's not a lot of Colombians that were cops back in the 90s in New York. It's probably not even a lot of Colombians that are cops in New York right now. So he's not very observant. That's another thing that let me know Clarence not on top of his A game. How do you see these people hop out, they pull up like this, and you think they cops? They ain't got no badges on. They ain't got uh, none of them windbreakers that say FBI, no bulletproof vest, none of that. But you think they 5-0. Hey man, it's looking like it could possibly be Clarence. Yo, we blazing these motherfuckers for what? Cause you know I'm ready. Yo, we blazing these motherfuckers for what? Cause you know I'm ready. Yo, we blazing these motherfuckers for what? Cause you know I'm ready. Clarence asks Ronnie, hey, are we blazing these MFs or what? Clarence has a guy standing there with a gun right in his face. The gun probably already cocked. Soon as Clarence make a fast move and up his arm, they going to switch cheese him. Juan Quan don't got no reason to not kill Clarence. Don't got no reason to not kill Ronnie. He would love for them to make a move so he can kill him. Ronnie has to tell him no. And if you remember in OG Power, Ghost said we had to get rid of him. He was going to get us killed. Now, when you look at Kanan, Kanan is a cowboy. He liked to shoot. He liked to bang him up. He liked to kill. He liked the thrills of shootouts. And Ghost is more methodical. Ghost is a thinker. Ghost feels like if he can think his way out of what has to happen, he will. But if it got to be done, somebody got to be taken down, he'll take him down. But that's not his first um, option for everything. And um we got to look at this and say hey um clarence is looking more like breeze now i know a lot of y'all will ask well how can clarence be breeze if he's working with ronnie and kanan kill ronnie how will he end up working with kanan well guess what clarence not smart clarence looking for somewhere to work clarence then came to town ronnie brought him to town Ronnie probably already told Clarence that Kanan was his right hand man and that he was working with him. So if Kanan end up killing Ronnie in episode 10 season 3, after Clarence kidnapped Kanan and Kanan killed Ronnie, Clarence won't be trying to leave town. He'll be looking for somebody to still get down with. And I believe that Clarence will end up telling Kanan, listen man, Ronnie, he did what he did to you. It's your mama. He had to go. But I'm still out of business. I still need work. Can I roll with you? Now, it's a possibility that they bring the Breeze character in, but they're not going to bring him in before episode four, or I don't believe they're going to reveal him before episode four if uh, Clarence turns out to be Breeze. Now, um, Kanan definitely told us that Breeze was his partner before he went to jail. And also, another thing that we should explore is... Um, Clarence appears to be Jamaican. We see he got the dreads, and we also see the Jamaican style hat he wearing. Not because of the style of it, but because of the uh, green, yellow, and red he got on his hat. So that could be a possibility that his name is Breeze because he come from the islands. Now, when you're in the streets doing work, one another thing that's going to tell you about Clarence. Clarence running around letting people call him his real name. And in the streets, you need a nickname, especially if you're doing dirt, especially if you're doing crime. So, um, Kanan could possibly start calling him Breeze because he's from the island. And maybe Clarence end up telling Kanan a story about um, being on the island in the water and how clear the water was and how the breeze would just, uh, how he would go stand down by the ocean every day and feel the breeze. And Kanan would be like, you know what, man? I'm going to start calling you Breeze. We can't have you walking through the streets telling people your real name. Truly, all the people never late. Let's go. It's only been like two minutes. Bravo? Nah. Yo, we blazing these motherfuckers for what? You know I'm ready, nigga. No. So what did y'all learn from me today? Y'all learned that Clarence, who could AKA be Breeze, 
Um, he's all muscle and no mind. Why is he no mind when Ronnie told him Juliana is never late instead of him following his lead to say pull off, he didn't want to pull off. When he saw like five SUVs surround him and pull up fast, his first instinct was to cock his gun, not hide his gun if he thought it was the police like he said. Now, a guy standing there with a gun directly in his face, he see about 10 to 15 people hop out of trucks with guns aimed and pointed. And the first thing that he say is, hey, let's shoot it out. We can bang them out right now. You know I'm ready. So he trying to show Ronnie that he is his muscle. He not trying to show him that he could think his way out of it. And Ronnie, I told y'all, Ronnie is smart. Ronnie can't be breezed. Ronnie the one who tells him no, and then after Ronnie tell him no, he say, that's Juliana cousin. If he here, Juliana is dead, and he knows about our business. That's something only a, a person who can think in the streets would know. That's, that's not common sense, that's wisdom. Oh, and to drop a little gem on y'all, man, a lot of people may not know what wisdom is. Wisdom is the understanding of knowledge and how to apply it to life and situations in order to keep getting ahead and moving in a positive direction. And once again, let me point out to y'all, Clarence is look like he Jamaican, he from the islands, so that name Breeze could be related to him living by the water, him being by the water, him liking to go uh, be down by the water. He could be telling the Canaan a story about how he used to always go down to the water as a kid or as an adult and how he missed the water. We don't know how long he's been in New York, but we do know that um, when you live on an island or when you live on a peninsula, um, when you live on a, a coast by the water, you always feel that breeze of the water. And to be clear, this is the third time this week we've been the first channel to come up with a theory. And I say we because y'all are part of me. I highly appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all clicking that like button. Appreciate y'all commenting y'all real opinions and thoughts as we able to brainstorm together. Appreciate y'all tuning in to the lives. Appreciate the super chats. Um, I'm just so thankful for y'all allowing me to be y'all source for not only power, but other cinema, TV shows, and movies. And for those of y'all who don't know, I'm Fairplay2333, comedian, actor, writer, digital creator, and that's F-A-I-R-P-L-A-Y space 2333. And you can find me on all platforms with that handle. Who the f is this guy? I'm unique. Who the f are you? Me? I'm priceless. Unique, huh? Uh, uh, hey. I don't suppose your mother came up with that one, huh? I'm a unique. How about yeah. that, huh? You got a good nickname for me? Hey, and take f***ing ubiquitous here with you. I actually do got a nickname for you. <laughs> yeah. Little Linguini. I actually do got a nickname for you. <laughs> yeah. Little Linguini. Little Linguini. <laughs> yeah. Little Linguini. When Stefano kidnapped Unique, not only did he give Unique a nickname, but Unique gave Stefano a nickname just like he gave Ghost a nickname. Now, the nickname was a funny nickname. Obviously, he was trying to make fun of his penis size and play into the stereo that people say about white guys. That was his way of being disrespectful to Stefano for Stefano being disrespectful to him. Hey, and take and ubiquitous here with you. And ubiquitous here with you. And ubiquitous here with you. So I found it very interesting that Stefano called unique ubiquitous. And what does ubiquitous mean? Ubiquitous means present, appearing, or found everywhere. What else is present, appearing, and found everywhere? A breeze. Um, the wind is always present. It's always blowing, even when you don't feel it. Feel it. And sometimes the breeze can just appear out of nowhere. But once again, it's found everywhere. It's nowhere in the world that you don't find breeze or wind. Now, I know some of y'all may think this is a reach, but I don't. You have to understand that when they do the power universe, um, they start writing everything to be cohesive. So it's no words wasted. It's no scenes wasted. They edit and take stuff out so they can only keep the important stuff. So when they write these scripts, they already know what they want the ending to be. 
So then all they have to do is right from the beginning to get to the ending they want, which is Breeze coming around. Now, I'll give you an example of this. Let's just say if you can go to the end of your life and you found out you was a Hall of Famer NBA player, right? And then you was able to time travel and pop back to the beginning of your life when you like 12, right? Well, what you would do is you would start to live your life with the purpose of becoming a Hall of Fame NBA player because you know that you're going to become a Hall of Fame NBA player. So essentially, just like the uh, writing crew do on Raising Canaan, you would start to write your story to follow a path to where you can become a, a NBA Hall of Famer. So what you would start doing, you would probably start going on the best AAU teams. You would probably start training harder. Um, you would pick a good high school. You would probably go to one of the top colleges. And why would you do that? Because you already know that your destiny is set. So you would probably even leave little clues um, to let people know that you were going to the NBA. You might be doing an a, a article with Sports Illustrated when you were in high school and you may say, yeah, one day I'm going to be an NBA player and I'm going to be a Hall of Famer and that's all to it. Well, you said that because you already know the ending. So everything that's being said in power is not just a coincidence. Hey, take ubiquitous here with you. I actually do got a nickname for you. <laughs> yeah. Little Linguini. Can you ubiquitous here with you? Little Linguini. Can you ubiquitous here with you? <laughs> yeah. Little Linguini. Now, for all we know, and I'll explore this a little more in depth, Unique could already be back. He can already be in Queens. He could just be laying low, recovering. Now, when we look at that field, I told y'all, when Unique got kicked down on um, that hill, it was a bunch of bags at the bottom when he got there. So maybe somebody was cleaning the uh, area. Maybe they were doing construction in the area. But somebody could have found Unique. Now, when we look at the situation with the police, when they went to the tailor shop, the police end up saying, what about Unique? They said it was um, skull, skull fragments, and they said it was blood there. They never said they saw brain fragments, which means Ronnie might have cracked his skull, but he didn't bust his head wide open. My example of that, when I was younger, I was playing basketball. I went up for a rebound. Somebody undercut me, and I chipped away a piece of my right elbow. You can still feel it now to this day. But guess what? I didn't shatter my elbow. I didn't require surgery. Um, now, I'm not saying he's not going to require surgery. Obviously, he's going to have to have his head stitched back up. But none of his brain came out, right? So he still can be functioning. Yes, he could have gotten a concussion, but it doesn't necessarily mean he got severe brain damage. Now, I do think um, he lost some of his senses. And one thing that happens sometimes when people have head trauma, um, they come back way more mean than they were before. So let's just say it's a possibility that Unique don't remember what Ronnie did to him, but it's also a possibility that Unique remember everything that Ronnie did to him. And he also got CTE, and that give him that Aaron Hernandez mean streak. Now, to address the elephant in the room, I did a theory that possibly, 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 I did a theory, keyword theory, that Clarence could possibly be Breeze. And I broke it down as good as possible off of the clues and the context that I felt I had. But I don't believe that Clarence is Breeze. Um, but I do believe he'll be playing a good role in this. And I do believe that he might quite possibly, he's either two people, right? Um, he's either D-Wiz's brother or he's a part of those other 13 people that got let out of jail with Ronnie. And it's a strong possibility that once Ronnie saw where everything was going, he just ended up saying, hey, I need you guys to come with me. We finna get to this money, but I need a team to get to this money. I'm finna have more work than I ever had, and we finna take these streets over. That's a strong possibility. Who the fuck is this guy? I'm unique. Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm priceless. Unique, huh? Uh, hey. I don't suppose your mother came up with that one, huh? I'm a unique. I'm a that, huh? You got a good nickname for me? Hey, and take ubiquitous here with you. I actually do got a nickname for you. <laughs> yeah. 
Little Linguini. So for the people who still confused, I believe that Unique is Breeze. I think Stefano actually gave him the idea for the name Breeze. I think while he was watching Jeopardy recovering, he called him ubiquitous or if he was recovering at Stefano's place laying low, Stefano kept calling him ubiquitous. And then Unique probably said, hey, man, you keep calling me ubiquitous. What that ish mean? And he probably told him what it mean or he said, get a dictionary. And he looked it up and he figured out what it meant. And he was like, probably was like, man, so you mean this mean like the breeze or the wind? And he was like, actually, yes. And then that's probably how he came up with that nickname. But um, long story, less long, um, Unique gave Stefano a nickname and that was to show us that unique give out nicknames just like he gave the ghost so it was like a, a setup for us it was showing us and telling us something without actually telling us and you know the information is out there for you to get it but you got to go search for it you used to live in my apartment when you was young a friend of mine did i was blocked over oh one second sweet take all the time you need <laughs> Yo, what's the plan, man? It's already in motion. I'm gonna give this nigga a history lesson. Southside Jamaica's a no-fly zone, man. You got cops everywhere. There's people getting shot up in the projects. You see the news? Some mafia guys got put down there the other night. What's the mafia? What'd I tell you about getting in the middle of adult talk? They ain't adults. Just play the damn game, Romero. I have proof that Bree's apartment is not Samrit old apartment now. Why do I say this? When you look at the two doors, the doors are totally different. Now, um, not only are they different, but they sitting on another angle. Now, when you look at that red arrow on the picture that Kanan is on to your left, that door is squared, right? And not only is that door squared, the house door, you can see it's off to the side of it, right? So in that house, what you would have to do is walk in and make a right to come through that door. Now, when you look at the right and you see that arrow that I have with the picture with Big Canaan on it, that door is um, a half circle, a half moon, whatever you want to call it. It's not squared off like the door to the left. And also, when you look at that main door, it's behind Canaan. So that apartment, you can walk straight in. Southside Jamaica's a no-fly zone, man. You got cops everywhere. There's people getting shot up in the projects. You see the news? Some mafia guys got put down there the other night. Now, I can see why everybody thought that this might have been the apartment that Breeze had, and it was a misdirection by the writers. The real reason that uh, Kanan went to Samrit apartment, because if you remember, Samrit didn't want to hustle on the street. Samrit was afraid of going to jail, probably because he was afraid of losing his son. He already got one weekend with his son already. So what do you, one weekend a week with his son. So what do you think going to jail for drug possession would do? It will probably uh, take away the little bit of um, custody that he did have with his son. I'm no architect or I'm no construction worker, but it's also other things that you can tell that's different about the uh, apartment. And we can just start with the angle of the apartment. Now, when you look at Samrit apartment, it was very simple, right? It was an apartment with not a lot of angles. It looked more like a project apartment. When you go to a project apartment, no matter what project it's in, you're not gonna have a lot of intricate angles, right? You're gonna basically have a box room and a closet. You're gonna have a box room and a door opening. They, gonna, they do it like that in order to save money. Growing up in Chicago on the west side, I stayed in the projects a long time, somewhere that they call Oakley Square now. Some of y'all might call it St. Stephen's Terrence of y'all back in the day. I've been in a lot of projects. I've been in the Ickies um, on the low end. I've been in the Michigan buildings on the low end. I've been in O Block back when it was called Wick City, and this was like the mid-2000s, like around 2007, 8, somewhere around there. I also been in the projects on 71st and Vincennes. I've been to the projects on 130th out there by Carver High School. And the reason I'm telling y'all this is because I've seen a lot of projects 
And when you have um, subsidized housing or housing that's cheaper than other housing or what y'all would call affordable housing, right? They not trying to spend a lot of money on them places, right? So what they end up doing is they get the most basic design and what they trying to do is they trying to put the most apartments in the smallest amount of space allowed so they can get their bread. So when you look at that apartment to the left, you can definitely tell that's like a low income apartment or that's apartment in the hood hood. You feel me? Now, when you look at Bree's apartment, I'm not saying that Bree's apartment isn't in the hood, but Bree's apartment might be in the better part of the hood because why Bree's would have had a little bit of money. He would have had some bread to buy a place. Now, when you look at Bree's old place, um, Bree's place has a lot of different angles. Like even when you look at the door top, it don't come straight down like a circle going down to the ground. It comes down like a half circle, then it has a divot that go to the right, then come down, and the same thing on the left. It has that divot and go to the left and come down. Then you can see how the window in Samrit apartment, it don't, it's not deep set. It's just a window, one of them project windows that sit close, and then you can push up and put down. When you look at the windows in Bree's apartment, it's probably like a one or a two foot divot on there where basically you can almost sit on the window. It's like the window is recessed into the wall and that comes in an apartment that has a lot of money. So for the people who wanted Samrit apartment to be Bree's apartment, it was a great try. I'm not going to lie. They almost got me. And so one of the guys I did some research with for this particular video um turbo bands he was basically sending me information and just showing me how like it might be the same apartment so what i ended up doing and that's turbo bands on youtube and on instagram so what i ended up doing i took the time out to say let me go look into this a little bit more and as i was looking into it what i noticed is a lot of different angles in the apartment i noticed that the ceiling looked different i noticed that the wall looked different now a lot of people took the fact that it got like a kind of yellowish hue to the apartment and that's probably where they got it from but one thing you got to understand is back in the day they didn't have the technology with light bulbs that they have now so they only had soft white lights so everything in every apartment is going to have a yellowish tint or a yellowish hue to it back in that day. Now, the other thing you have to take into account is that um, they trying to shoot the apartment and a lot of these scenes on Rays and Canaan. They trying to shoot them darker because they want to give you that old vibe and that old feel. They can't give you grainy footage because everybody used to watching stuff in HD now. So the best way to give you that old vibe and that old feel of like you watching an older TV show because Raising Canaan take place in the 90s is to give it that darker look. And that's why you see the episodes always have a darker look whenever they inside. And that's partially due to the light bulb technology at the time and them trying to stay true to the era because this show take place in the 90s so long story short once again this is not Bree's apartment on the left i don't believe we've seen Bree's apartment yet what i think is when breeze comes on the scene if he's unique like i think he is he's gonna need a new place to stay and then that is when he's gonna go find the apartment that he needs box go ahead I've been seeing a lot of theories that say uh, Breeze lives in Symphony Apartment. Symphony Apartment is 13A. Breeze Apartment would be 5D. The other thing about that is Breeze lives in Queens. When Detective Burke pulled Symphony over for no reason and she asked for his ID, you can clearly see on his ID it does say 13A, but you can also see that he lives on Evergreen Ave in the Bronx, New York, not Queens. So there's no way that Breeze could be living in his building or living in his apartment or be um, anywhere near there in any capacity. Um, one of the reasons that Ghost killed Breeze because Breeze didn't want to expand outside of Queens. And I'll go deeper into that story in another video. But um, for one second, I probably thought, okay, the apartment number is 13A. So maybe um, 
Breeze lives in Symphony Building on another floor, but once I figured out that Symphony lived in the Bronx, it's no way that uh, Breeze would be running a major operation and live in the Bronx. Now, we already know from OG Power that Breeze lived in Queens. When Ghost got out of school, he snuck into Breeze's house and he killed him. So another thing I'm expecting, I'm expecting a time jump in season four is it has to be a time jump if they don't time jump in season four they're gonna have to time jump in season five but anyway i'm sorry to disappoint a lot of y'all i know a lot of y'all was really wishing and hoping that uh symphony's apartment was where breeze was staying or he stayed in that building because it would put a couple of the pieces together but it won't it's just not gonna happen as i said symphony stays in the bronx breeze canaan ghost Tommy, um, they actually live in Queens. We all know they live in Southside, Jamaica, Queens. So y'all got to kill that theory. Stop putting out that video saying that that's possibly it. It's not it. Won't be it. Never will be it. I'm unique. Who f are you? Me? I'm priceless. You ever notice the Moolies? <laughs> the Moolies. They got all the best nicknames. Huh? <laughs> business is business. I'm about making money, not friends. Man after my own heart. You know, I can respect anyone who can let bygones be bygones. I appreciate your moxie. You know what I mean? I'm in here with humility and grace and want to do business together. I like that. Hey, look. I appreciate your moxie. You know what I mean? I'm in here with humility and grace and want to do business together. I like that. If you could just be so kind and point me in the right direction, I'd be greatly appreciated. Because just like you, I'm one hell of a conversationalist. <laughs> that you are unique. You to, uh, to an item? I'm unique. Who f*** are you? Me? I'm priceless. If I'm to run with the theory that Stefano is helping Unique hide while Unique recover, I gotta break down all of these situations and see what they mean to me and what they could possibly mean for Unique in the Raising Canaan power universe. Now, the first thing you have to conceptualize is that Unique will be back on power and he not dead. Now, if you can get past that, you'll understand the concept of everything I'm saying is not far-fetched. You'll also remember Unique telling Marvin until that body pop up, that man ain't dead. Unique introduce himself to Stefano and Stefano in turn tells him, I'm priceless. Now in my theory, if Unique has to go somewhere to recover, if I'm Unique, I would wanna go somewhere to recover where nobody would come looking for me at. Sometimes you can hide in plain sight, but when you're trying to recover like Unique, you want to hide out where nobody can get to you because you're not in your best state as a person. You're not able to defend and protect yourself. Now, what does priceless mean? So precious that its value cannot be determined a priceless work of art. So in this theory, let's just say that Unique did uh, survive that situation and Stefano is allowing him to recover somewhere around him. That would mean that Stefano is priceless to Unique. Um, you can't put a value on your life. You can't put a value on your safety. So when you look at it from that perspective, Stefano could have been foreshadowing him helping Unique by telling him that he's priceless. And also later on, we'll discuss the part where um, Stefano actually put Unique back in the game and he actually started to gain a lot of respect for and like Unique as a person which would also be priceless because Unique was dead in the water before Stefano. Nobody would work with him. He couldn't get no work, couldn't get nothing off the ground. You ever notice the Moolies? <laughs> the Moolies, they got all the best nicknames. Huh? They got all the best nicknames. Huh? I think it's important to point out when Stefano say the Moolies got all the best nicknames, if y'all don't know or understand what a Moolie is, that's basically the N-word. So that tells you what he basically think about the black people. That basically tells you what he think about Unique. Even the way he made fun of Unique nickname tells you a lot about what he think about Unique. He probably look at him, you know, like he a clown or he probably look at a lot of the black people who in the drug trade like a clown, especially when you see them wearing all that jewelry and flashy and stuff like that. 
Um, but uh, both sides are actually flashy in their own way. Unique them wear jewelry, but they wear like thousand dollar suits, and all of that'll put you on the radar. But nonetheless, um, he speaks on nicknames, and that's one of the parts that I think was very pivotal. Now, I did a video, Unique got his nickname from Stefano, which will break down all of this. Y'all can check it out in the end screen. I'll also put the link to that in the bottom in the description. If you enjoying this video to this point, click the like button, subscribe, and comment. But the most important part of this is that um, when Stefano first met Unique, he didn't have a lot of respect for him. Right after this scene, when Garcia punched him, Stefano replied, Sally said you got a mouth on you. <laughs> Sally said you had a mouth on you. Sally said you had a mouth on you. Which means that Stefano already knew about Unique and he had some thought process of who Unique was as a person before he even met him. So obviously for that person, you can for that reason, you can tell that he don't like Unique on his initial meeting, especially after he find out his name. Business is business. I'm about making money, not friends. Man after my own heart. You know, I can respect anyone who can let bygones be bygones. You know, I can respect anyone who can let bygones be bygones. So when Unique came in here to speak to Stefano, he started off with a little small talk, showing interest in some things that he's interested about, um, cracked a couple of jokes. He asked him about the fish, and then he let him know, listen, man, I'm in here for business. I can let bygones be bygones because I understand that that move that you made with Rock was business. It wasn't a personal move. And Stefano respect that. And because of that respect, Stefano give Unique the meeting that Unique came there for, even you though Unique just popped up out the blue on Stefano um, and only met him one time and not under the best circumstances. So um, this will show you this scene right here shows the shift in the dynamic of their relationship. And then um, the next scene we going to evaluate is what's going to um, put them in the correct position for what I believe is for Unique to feel comfortable being able to go to Stefano in order to seek refuge. I appreciate your moxie. You know what I mean? I'm in here with humility and grace and want to do business together. I like that. Hey, look. I appreciate your moxie. You know what I mean? I'm in here with humility and grace and want to do business together. I like that. Want to do business together. I like that. So it's two things you have to keep in mind right here. Unique has totally changed uh, Stefano's perception of him. Um, Stefano giving him that meeting with people that he worked with also says that he's vouching for Unique. So when he says he liked that, he's saying he liked Unique. He's not just fronting. He's not just capping. He's not just lying. He's not just putting on a show for Unique. Um, his name is on the line and anything that Unique would go over there to one of them connects and do would come back on Stefano. So Stefano has to feel really good about what he think about Unique. Now, this meeting is much different than the meeting that he had with Unique at first. Now, what you got to understand is when Unique was in handcuffs, he was cocky, he was arrogant, he was speaking, saying whatever came to his mind. The irony of this situation is that he's free to do whatever he want in this situation but he came more humble in the other situation he was restrained and he was held and he was actually in a position of um weakness but he came off humble and arrogant so i think this is an easter egg that a lot of people missed that this is the exact same situation under different scenarios and the conversation goes a lot different which in turns makes stefano take a liking to Unique. So what you have to understand is once Stefano does this for Unique, they essentially business partners. And you gotta remember that Rock did a favor for Stefano and Stefano thinks that Rock and Unique is a couple. So it's like hand in hand. Not only do he like Unique, but Unique come from somebody who Stefano have a big relationship with and somebody who did a huge favor for him by getting rid of Sal, a.k.a. Sabacelli, a.k.a. Sally. And that's another um, inference of how 
Stefano has given people nicknames. And for those of y'all who say, oh, why would they have two nicknames? Um, Sabacelli has three names already. You two, uh, to an item? You two, uh, to an item? When we look at this question, when he asks Rock, are they an item? Rock deflects from the question. She don't confirm or deny, but um, Stefano understands that if he's kidnapping Rock in the middle of the night to bring her down at a talk and Unique is in his boxes and his wife beater, that's not just a business meeting they have and that's something personal. But this actually plays into Unique's favor. When Stefano see Unique like this with Rock, he sees Unique as an extension of Rock. So when they sit down at the table and he asks, does Rock know he down here? Unique don't say she don't know he down there. What he basically tell him is, hey, Rock is out the game, which it leaves an open-ended theory, right? So Stefano can interpret that a couple of ways. But the way I think that Stefano interpreted is, hey, Rock is out the game, but I'm here as a representation of her because, you know, you saw us together. It's like an unspoken rule or an unspoken language. Stefano asked him a direct question about Rock and what Unique did was he gave Stefano some personal information and Stefano has already heard Rock say that so Stefano can kind of corroborate that and be like okay Unique must be close to her because he got some information that I'm sure she not running around just telling any and everybody and on top of that when I kidnapped them he was in his boxes and his wife beat her. So because of these reasons, and it's many more, but these reasons I feel are enough to say that if Unique is back, if Unique is back, um, it would not be far-fetched for Stefano to hide him because of the growth of their relationship. One, um, Unique comes with a reference from Rock. Two, Stefano think that Unique and Rock is in a relationship. Three, um, Unique came into his fish shop with some respect and some humility and showed him a totally different side of him. Um, and he also took a real liking to Unique. And then four, they business partners. Once he introduced him to anybody that got anything to do with the five families, anything to do with the drug connection, y'all are tied in because anything that Unique do is a reflection of something that you did and it can get Stefano killed. So Stefano liked Unique a lot and like I say with that business being a part of that business um, Stefano has a mutual benefit to getting Unique back on the streets because um, Unique getting money is Stefano getting money also something that's very underrated that I forgot to touch on if Unique is close to Rock Stefano can get little information here and there from Unique or at least he think he can possibly get information on Rock from Unique. He can keep an eye on both of them at the same time by asking one questions about the other and vice versa. Now, if we are to believe that Marvin is gonna leave and go to DC, that would leave Rock without muscle, but Unique could possibly say, okay, you can have this portion and I'll have this portion. What'd you do to Howard? Guy's been on the job for 25 years, never called him sick until today. August 15th. 1975. This from the other couple who pushed up on me when I was 16 years old. You said you were 17. They will also said I graduated high school. That I was carrying around a book on geometry every day. You should. So we know from DEF CON arrest record, he was born March 17th, 1954. August 15th. 1975. We know from Canaan arrest, he was born August 15th, 1975. This from the other couple who pushed up on me when I was 16 years old. You said you were 17. So right now in a timeline of raising Canaan, Canaan would be 17 years old right now. We've heard them say that before. Um, he on his last year of high school. But the most important part is that he's 17 years old. Now, if we take 17, which is Canaan age, and subtract it from the year he was born, we get 1958, which is Rock's birth year. Now, if we move forward to 1992, which is the current timeline of the Raising Canaan universe, Rock will be 34 years of age right now on the show in season three. 
We know that Jukebox is one year older than Kanan. Jukebox went to prom last season and she's done with high school. I don't know why she didn't go to a graduation, probably because of what happened with Nicole. But we also know Jukebox is 18 because she was able to uh, do her whole army process without using parents consent if she was 17 she would be considered a minor which would mean she would need marvin's consent to even go do the physical field of paperwork out sign the contract so we know she's 18 so that means jukebox will be born in 1974 um like i said she's 18 um in 1992 in the raising cane in season three timeline when Marvin and Rock was having a conversation about him going to jail and they was basically talking about their upbringing, um, they said that Marvin was a few years older than Rock. So I'll take that to just mean three. Um, and this is a roundabout. So we would say Marvin was born no later than 1955. Now, he could have been born earlier than 1955 and be in his 40s. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to place Marvin at 37 years of age. So almost about to be 40. And if you take his personality, the way he dressed, the type of fashion and style he wear, um, you can say he's close to his 40s. And we can compare and contrast to the way that Unique dressed, the way that Kanan dressed, the way that Ronnie dressed. And we would understand that Marvin dresses closer to the way that Ronnie and Rock dress than he do to the way that Unique and Lou dress. Clothes are very important when you're trying to establish a timeline. Now, if we look at Ronnie, Ronnie know all of the old heads, but he don't know none of the young guys. He don't even know any of the people unique age. So I would say that Ronnie was born in 1951. I would think that Ronnie would be around 41 years of age. Now, when you look at the Power Wiki page or the fandom page, whatever it's called, they had him as being born in 1971, and then they had him as being born in 1961. Now, I would think that Ronnie is a little closer to 41 just because Snap and Pops appear to know a lot about Ronnie, and they know a lot about him hanging with Def Con. To me, for what the way they speak, it sounds like first-hand knowledge and not some somebody told them. Now, when we talk about Ghost, this don't got to be a long one. They've said before that Ghost is five years younger than Kanan. If Kanan is 17 right now, that means Ghost would be 13 right now, maybe 14. You know how that go with the age thing, depending on his date of birth. So that would leave him being born in 1979. Now, if y'all remember when Ghost got arrested in OG Power, um, it was a lot of times where they looked up his date or ran his name and he was definitely born in 1979 so in 1992 he would end up being 13. now i say depending on where his birthday fall he could be 14. but i mentioned this to mention two things um y'all saying that uh romero couldn't be roller well he could be roller because guess what he's younger than ghost ghost is about 13 or 14 right now and Romero is between 9 and 11 years old. So he definitely fit the criteria age-wise to be Ghost Lil Homie. Now, I don't know why 5 tend to be a thing, but I remember them saying that Lou was 5 years younger than Rock. He was her baby brother. So if we go back 5 years from 1958, we would get Lou being born in 1963 which will put him at 29 years old. Now, let's get to Unique, a.k.a. Breeze. Now, the reason I put him last and Lou before him, because I wanted to piggyback off of something that I saw in one of the episodes. Now, if you remember when the Thomas family was really heavy into the beef with Unique and his crew, which was around like season two, um, one time Lou was talking to them and he called them some young MFers, right? He called them some kids. So that would let you know that Unique and his crew is 1,000% younger than Lou, but they older than Kanan. Now, let's not be fooled by Unique relationships. All of the relationships that Unique have is because of Ronnie. So when you see Unique moving around with the older guys, remember, Ronnie left Unique his business, so that's why he's able to get in touch with Dean and all of these different people and talk to them and move through the street. But to be honest, 
If you remember when Buck 20 died, Unique was close to Buck 20. We know that Unique is not older than Lou, but he also not younger than Kanan. So I would put Unique birth year around like 1966. And that's what they said it was on the fandom page. And I do kind of agree with that, but I think that the only thing that's different, I think that we can probably go down a few years. So realistically, if I went off my own judgment and then you have to also take style into account. Um, he dresses like a lot of the young getting money guys around that age. So it says that Unique will be about 26, but I will probably put Unique closer to 23, 22. But remember, no older than 26. So if I got to give you that breakdown again, Breeze would be Kanan, big homie. Kanan would be Ghost, big homie. Ghost would be Roller, big homie. Malcolm Howe would be, would be older than Defcon. Defcon would be older than Ronnie. Ronnie would be older than Rock. Rock would be older than Lou. Lou would be older than Kanan and Marvin would be older than Rock, but younger than Defcon and younger than uh, Detective Howard. In my personal opinion, this is the most accurate timeline we can probably get without um, Power actually coming out and telling us. Now, as time go on, somebody may get arrested and they may release their age again, um, like they did with Zeke when they released his... Um, birth certificate on power book two ghosts so it's not far-fetched that these numbers could change but i think this is the most accurate number and also why i believe breeze is unique and unique is not dead if you like this power book multiverse cinema breakdown and you looking forward to more tv shows and movie breakdowns just like this click the like button the subscribe button and the notification bell